About a month ago, I drove down to the live fish store, which is about two hours away, and I came upon this little guy in a tank all by himself, and I just fell in love with him. Uh, of course, I had to buy him. He was very expensive, my most expensive fish purchase ever, and uh, he's just the most personable little guy. He's just amazing little fish. Jawfish are really shy creatures. They're shy, except with each other. They fight when there are two of them in the same tank. Because jawfish are notorious jumpers, especially if they're scared, I had two custom screens built to cover the top of my tank. I have LED lighting so there's no heat problem. I used a poly screen that I purchased online and there's contact info for purchasing this screen at the end of this video. I wanted to talk a little bit about how to feed a jawfish. It's really important when you get a jawfish to make sure that they're well fed because they live in the bottom of the tank and the, when you drop food into the tank, well the fish that are swimming up at the top are always going to eat the food right away and the little jawfish may or may not get anything to eat. So I buy frozen krill and krill is actually little tiny shrimp. I take one little krill and with the scissors I cut it into small cubes that are you know, just the right size for my jawfish to eat. And I put about two tablespoons of Kent Marine Zo, which is vitamins, amino acids, and minerals, um, along with about four drops of Kent Garlic Extreme, which is garlic drops. And I let that mixture and the krill soak overnight in the refrigerator. So the next day, I have enough food to feed my jawfish. Angelo's other favorite food is frozen mysis shrimp soaked in vitamins, selcon, and garlic drops. This concoction, I believe, is what has boosted the immunity of my fish, and they're really colorful, they're really healthy and happy. This is my blue hippo tang, who had a terrible case of the ick shortly after I put him in my tank. I couldn't catch him, he was really fast, and so I decided that I would experiment and see if I could cure him by boosting his immune system. So I fed him the mysis shrimp soaked in Kent Zo vitamins and with garlic drops. I kept the water really super stable. Uh, whenever I do water changes, I heat the water. I make sure that I don't pour cold water into my tank. I get the water the same temperature as the tank water, and then I do my water change. Ever since I've done these things with the vitamins, the garlic drops, and keeping the water temperature stable, my blue tang has been cured of the ick. Angelo has built himself a little cave in the bottom of my reef tank. And over on the right side of the tank, Angelo uh, piled up a bunch of rubble, little pieces of rock that he found, and he carried them over one by one, and he built this little, like a little cave for himself. And it, it must be kind of deep because he, he's a long fish, he's about four inches long. And he goes in and out of this cave. He, he, he moves first with his tail, and he goes down with his tail into the little, his little hidey hole. The first week, Angelo seemed kind of shy, and he stayed in his cave a lot. After that first week, he figured out that he was safe from predators and started moving around the tank to other locations. But the really exciting part of his day is when he gets to be fed, and I try to make sure that he does get food. So how I do that is I take my long-handled tongs, I just pinch a little piece of, of vitamin-soaked krill into the end of the tongs, and then I lower the tongs down into the tank about maybe two inches above my jawfish's head, and then I open the tongs and the little piece of krill drops down and as you can see, Angelo just grabs it and just eats it right up. It's really fun to watch him eat and it makes me feel really good that he's 
he's getting enough food and he's really healthy and his color is great. He doesn't have the ick. He's a happy boy. I think he's a boy. I'm not sure. If anybody knows what sex he is, please let me know. I, I call him Angelo. I, I thought he was a boy, but I really don't know. Could be a girl. I also feed my jawfish frozen mysis shrimp with a long turkey baster-like tool that I bought from Marine Depot. I squeeze out all the air in the uh, bulb part of the baster, and then I suck up a glob of mysis shrimp that I then lower into the bottom of the tank. This is actually probably the best way I've found to feed Angelo because he he always grabs the food right off the end of the baster, and um, he seems to have no problem swallowing the mysis shrimp. So actually, they may be even better than the krill. Here you see Angelo eating little pieces of krill. You know, I've fed him once, I've fed him twice, and now here's his third bite, and he says, you know, this is just way too big. So he keeps trying to swallow it, but then he keeps spitting it out. And it's because I made it too big. So be sure to cut your krill small enough so that your fish can actually swallow it. Because, you know, you can see Angelo's going, ah, I can't eat this. So I'm just, I'm just going to play with it instead. So he's kind of like spitting it out and grabbing it again. And I guess he's hoping that maybe it'll, he'll be able to chop it up or, you know, eventually swallow it. But... Eh, he didn't have much luck. I'm sorry, Angelo. I made it too big. Ah. And then he gives up and he just kind of spits it out and lets it drop to the bottom of the tank. <laughs> so now I've got to get down in my tank and clean that out because I don't want it to decompose and, and cause nitrates in my tank. A lot of reef keepers discourage people from getting their blue spotted jawfish because they really are a special needs fish. You have to have your, the top of your tank completely covered, and I mean every little crack, or else you may come home and find a little fish that's jumped out of the tank and landed right on the floor. Another thing is that they have to be fed three times a day, and you basically have to feed them by hand. And the very last thing is that these jawfish come from waters that are about 100 feet deep, and so they're accustomed to a cooler temperature. Now, if you have a tank with metal halides and, and your tank temps vary you know, several degrees a day, you are probably not going to have a very happy jawfish, maybe one that w will jump out of the tank just to stay cooler. If you have a cooler tank with LED lighting, it might be a good thing. What I'm trying to say is, I think I'm one of those reef keepers that would like to discourage you from getting a jawfish. Well, this has been fun. This has been our first episode of Reef Tank Gardens, and thanks so much for tuning in. Um, next time, I think we're going to be talking about how to keep sun polyps open day and night. It's a little trick that I learned, and I want to pass that along to you. Forget about those sun polyps. It's me, Angelo. Stay tuned for my next episode. <laughs>